are so intertwined in a rural area that everybody here is affected by domestic violence and sexual assault, but they just don't know it. When we tell people that we have homeless in our community, they, they just don't believe us because they've got this uh, stereotype visual of um, the homeless in Seattle, where they're out on the streets, laying on sleeping bags, holding up signs. We have people living in abandoned houses, and we have people living in under bridges, and people living in their cars with children. With all of the good people here, I think if we could get everybody to acknowledge that th this is a problem, um, by just doing a little bit, it, it could contribute a lot. I think that um, a lot of people don't know what to do. That you know they once they acknowledge that you know it's an issue, um, they don't know what they can do to help, and they don't think that any little piece of help that they could offer would be enough. You or know, make they, a difference. or make any kind of difference. But it doesn't even have to be that much. It could be a landlord changing their their thinking on um, you know I don't I don't want to want to rent to one of those people um, you know I don't want her bringing her problems here I don't want holes in my walls and it's changing that thought process in our community and really that doesn't cost anything because there are people who don't think that way but just don't know how to go out and verbalize that to other people in the community that would be a huge help and that doesn't cost anything. The Housing First really allows everybody involved to perform at their highest level as advocates. Our energy is focused on the client versus where are we going to find the money. If I, I, I didn't find this um, help on the crisis support, I didn't do it by myself. They helped me to to move over here in my own place. So over here is more p peaceful. It fits her needs. She likes it. It's home. And we also have the strong advocacy piece because we're not out looking for that extra $300. We're able to focus more on her safety and um, her well-being. Sharon always called me to see how's the, my life doing, if everything okay. I don't have any relatives here or family or nothing like that, so she's like my friend because she's the only person can I trust. If I need anything or, or I want to ask somebody in, um, something, so I just call her and she's always be there for me. Women didn't need as much money as we thought they initially would need. We thought they'd need thousands and thousands of dollars. Some women only needed $50 to maintain their housing or you know, to help get a tire fixed so they could go to their job. If, if we can just eliminate that, they can focus on what's, what's really important in their lives and you know, their safety, um, their children, you know, what, their, their mental health, their physical health things that they haven't focused on for sometimes years or ever. Yeah. I can remember one of her first calls. I was on call and he was walking around walking around the house with a loaded gun and he she was hiding and she called me from a closet. And that's how we first met her. He was so perfect. I couldn't believe how perfect he was. It was like living with myself and then the day I got married it was like completely changed. I ceased to exist. I've had seven surgeries now, four years. I got metal plates. He put my head through an 80 gallon fish tank. Tried to light me on fire. Thank God I was wet from the fish tank. And yeah, he really, he really damaged me. I got artificial knee and 408 discs, three metal plates. This fractured lower back. He never could stand me being happy. He would stomp my kittens to death in front of me. And I wasn't allowed to leave the house or 
have friends or I wasn't allowed to be seen with him anywhere. But um, I couldn't, there's no way I could leave it. It was very hard. And it was really hard knowing that everything was his, the house was his, his whole family lives up and down the street there. It's, I, I had no way to get out of there and it was really hard to survive there. I almost didn't. I almost just didn't want to anymore. I'm so glad I did. So, um, I'm so glad I you. did, yes. Well, it's because of you guys and the start you give me. and That's all I needed was a little leg up and a little compassion. And I couldn't have saved up the, you know, the money for the deposit and then the money to get the electricity on. And then I have my cat, so I had to pay, you know, deposits <laughs> for that. And it's just been wonderful. And I have such an amazingly awesome home now. And it's usually full of kids and it's just incredible. And I don't have to worry about the anger and violence in front of them anymore. And just that little bit, you know, made me, I have a life. I have a life now. A good life. An amazingly good life. The thing that really um, spoke out to me is it only took $1,500 to change the course of her life. Of course, with great advocacy services as well, but $1,500... It's not a lot of money when it comes to safety and somebody's livelihood. I think she she could possibly be dead had she not had that fifteen hundred dollars because his his abuse was escalating. We really help people. We really make an impact. It's a really amazing work, and it's amazing because we get to experience it with them. It's not like we're leading them and showing them the path. And most of the times they're showing us a new path and, and that's a huge gift. I just have so much love in me. I never knew I had it. And I have enough love and respect for me now and I'm healthy enough now that I can give it to somebody else now and I can't wait to do that. It's such a blessing. I didn't know life could be so peaceful. It's just amazing.